Vertebrate Histology Lab, Integumentary System, Part 1. We're going to be taking a look at two slides. Thick skin. Uh, a Pacinian corpuscle. So I'm just going to click in thick skin. And we're going to click on slide 21 from the histology collection. markers off. This is the free surface of the skin here. The epidermis extends from this zone to here. Dermis of the skin is located here. So we're going to first examine the epidermis. Again the epidermis is composed of stratified squamous epithelium uh, keratinized and recall that in thick skin we can view uh, five different zones of the keratinocyte. The, the keratinocytes, the primary uh, cell type associated uh, with the epidermis and let's zoom in and let's start with the innermost layer the stratum basale. The stratum basale is composed of a single layer of roughly cuboidal shaped cells. All right. And then we're going to find the row of cuboidal epithelial cells interrupted by melanocytes. Recall that from lecture that melanocytes are located primarily in the stratum basale. They tend to have a clear zone around the nucleus. The cell layer, uh, the, the zone above the stratum basale, is the stratum spinosum. And note the spiny appearance, been described as looking somewhat like a little holly leaf um, in, these, in this particular region. And as we talked about in lecture, this uh, spiny appearance is due to dehydration of the cells uh, as the cells were being prepared um, for if the tissue was being prepared to be viewed um, under the light microscope, we can see regions uh, where the cells are uh, in this zone still remain they remain attached to each other by anchoring junctions. Okay, so let me back off a bit. Recall that the stratum spinosum is the thickest layer of living cells. So it extends here from the um, just above the stratum basale to the, uh, this zone here where we find cells containing some dark granules. This zone is referred to as the stratum granulosum. Here are the keratinocytes are going to contain uh, numerous <coughs> granules in the cytoplasm. Okay, and we talked about the contents of these granules in lecture. Uh, the membrane coating granules which release their um, 
uh, lipid product onto the surface of the plasma membrane and then um, as a result the uh, cells will not um, lose water as this substance is not lipid soluble so it just coats the plasma membrane. Now Okay, the cells in the stratum granulosum uh, are beginning to die due to this impervious barrier formed uh, by the uh, contents of the membrane coating granules. Again, restricting water movement into or out of the cell and also restricting diffusion of nutrients uh, from the dermis. Um, up into the uh, epidermis or in, into this, this particular cell type and it also interferes with waste removal. The stratum lucidum which is a translucent layer uh, associated with thick skin. I mean it's, it's, it's visible uh, in thick skin. It's zone right here and then the stratum corneum and notice that the surface cells or squams in this case um, are being sloughed away the attachments the adhering junctions and so forth desmosomes um, are being are, are they just degenerate in this region and um, so the surface cells begin to slough away. Recall that stratum lucidum and the stratum corneum, um, all of the cells in both layers are dead. Essentially they're just bags of keratin. So stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and then the single layer of cells at the interface of the epidermis and the dermis represents the stratum basale. And then note the melanocytes okay. interrupting the row of roughly uh, columnar, pardon me, cuboidal shaped cells of the stratum basale. The dermis lies just beneath the epidermis. It's the inner layer of the skin. And I want you to note the fine appearance, let me just zoom in, of the collagen fibers in this region of the dermis, the region lying directly beneath the uh, epidermis, and the collagen fi fibers, the bundles that we find in the deeper zones of the dermis. Okay. This thin layer of loosely organized connective tissue lying just beneath the stratum basale uh, constitutes the papillary layer of the dermis. Okay. Deeper in the dermis we find that the uh, connective tissue is a dense, irregular, collagenous connective tissue. So loose connective tissue in the papillary layer of the dermis, dense, irregular, collagenous connective tissue in the deeper regions of the dermis. This is referred to as the reticular layer of the dermis, in the papillary layer of the dermis. We also find projections of the dermis into the epidermis and these little um, protrusions are referred to as dermal papillae. Now if we look in the dermal papillae we will find some specialized sensory structures known as Meisner's corpuscles. Meisner's corpuscles are responsible for, well they're actually touch receptors and they help to detect um, um, light touch. Okay, here's one here. 
there's part of one there. Let's just scan all along the region here. Okay, Meissner's corpuscles. They're going to be found in these dermal ridges. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Sweat glands we looked at earlier in the semester when we were identifying the different uh, types of epithelial tissues, uh, specifically looking at stratified cuboidal epithelium. Recall that stratified cuboidal epithelium it composes the um, ducts of the sweat glands. There are two different types of sweat glands. Here we're looking at eccrine sweat glands. And these eccrine sweat glands are going to function in um, temperature regulation. The secretory portions of the gland, the little acini, are going to st uh, not stain quite as intensely. The cytoplasm is not going to stain quite as intensely with hematoxylin and eosin as the cytoplasm of the ducts. And again, the ducts are um, composed of a stratified cuboidal epithelium. So here we have ducts of the sweat glands ducts of the sweat glands, and acini or secretory units of the sweat glands. And for lab practical purposes, uh, if I uh, ask you to identify these structures, please identify them as eccrine sweat glands. We'll be taking a look at apocrine sweat glands, another class of sweat glands, in the second uh, part of our integumentary system uh, lab video. So let's, uh, again, their sweat glands are scattered all throughout the dermis here. We even find some lying in the uh, hypodermis. All of these structures are sweat glands. Okay. We zoom in this region here. Maybe a bit too much. And again, secretory units, secretory units, ducts of the sweat glands. If we take a closer look at the ducts, I notice that they are composed of stratified cuboidal epithelium. Okay, more ducts. Secretory units. Now look at this rather large structure here and here. Um, these structures um, are Pacinian corpuscles. And the Pacinian corpuscles are located uh, deep in the dermis. Even we'll find them also in the hypodermis. And they respond to um, um, vibratory um, types of pressures and also um, are responsible for our uh, sense of deep touch or pressure receptors. They're referred to as commonly as pressure receptors. Pacinian corpuscles in there. Eventually we'll get around to it. <laughs> Maybe not. There we go. Notice how large they are. Okay. Oh, one more structure that I, one more cell type that I want to um, you to be able to identify in association with the eccrine sweat glands. Come on. Are myoepithelial cells. Well. OK. 
Okay. So let's look at some of our secretory units. Zoom in. Very slow. Got to be patient, I guess, here. Okay. But around the periphery of the secretory units, we'll find some myoepithelial cells. Now these myoepithelial cells have characteristics in common with smooth muscle cells as well as epithelial cells. And uh, they're therefore capable of um, contracting and help to express the secretory product of the glands. Okay, so there's some myoepithelial cells um, surrounding the uh, secretory units of the sweat glands. Then the hypodermis of the skin. The hypodermis is not 